Hey YouTube, it's been a while since I've made one of these, but uh, I haven't really found any good guides for, uh, or c recent guides for um, installing a hard disk drive to a PS2, um, especially like a SATA hard disk drive, which it turns out really isn't any different. But installing it to a PS2 and then installing games on it and running your games from the hard drive kind of benefit to installing a hard drive instead of running games off a disk is of course you can you don't have to switch out the disk every time but it also saves your laser which can be really beneficial to especially like the, the fat playstation 2s the original models the lasers tend to break on those especially when playing cd based games which are the blue the blue disc games and it also has a few other benefits like no load times at all which is really good um, but there are a few drawbacks too. Uh, for example, some games don't, uh, you know, start right off the bat. Uh, the first game I tried was uh, Xenosaga, and um, of course, that game didn't load. You know, it just kind of got to the the title screen and start off from where I left off from the memory card, or start a new game. When you go to start a new game, you just get like a mini map in the bottom right hand corner. So, and it just stops there. Mm, but there are ways around stuff like that, like with Xenosaga, um, I believe you can patch it to not use uh, DVD-9, which I heard works, but I haven't tested that. Uh, you can also just make another save file uh, after the initial start of the game in an emulator like a PSX2, and then import that save and then start off from there, and then the game works perfectly fine. So it, I would have to say um, running games from the hard drive is probably the best way to play PS2 games um, other than playing them on a di with a disc because reduced load times and uh, overall the compatibility is really good, uh, especially when compared to like network play or USB play, the hard drive is just the, is just the best way. Without any more introductions, let's just get into it. Um, so first off, you're going to want to download uh, OPL Daily Builds, which I'll provide this link. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to actually locate this specific thread because they changed where they hosted all this information. So a lot of the links that Google has cached, uh, they, they're just basically dead ends or they're old forms or old form posts. Um, so I, I had to track down, you know, all of these threads and uh, get the latest stuff. Uh, so the most recent build of OPL is uh, is 976 as of this video. So and and it works very well. Um, the second thing you're going to want to download is OPL Manager. So you go ahead and download both of those programs. Um, I'm not going to do that because I already have them. Uh, so just go go ahead and install those. I mean, there are other videos online that show you with those programs and, and after they've been installed. OPL, you're gonna have to put on a USB drive. Uh, so you can see, this is my USB drive that I put in my PS2 and uh, I've got the original, uh, or I've got uh, 0.93 uh, with GSM and uh, 0.9.4, this is the daily build. So so I've just put that in um, in a folder inside my USB drive. Also, um, the daily build comes with uh, VMC and GSM and the cheat engine. Uh, VMC just stands for a virtual memory card. GSM is like uh, a resolution modifier, so you can run your games at uh, higher than intended resolutions, which is really nice. So you can like run a lot of games at uh, 1080i uh, interlaced or non-interlaced signal. Okay, so you've got those downloaded. Next, you want to find this program called WinHip. Uh, you can just go through Google and, and download that. It's it, The EXE should look like this. Um, some of the other guys that I've, I've watched, uh, they, they say this doesn't work on Windows 10. Um, to get it to specifically work for me, um, I had to... Uh, right click on it and go to run as administer uh, if you don't run it as administer uh, I'll show you what happens I've got to you know take out my hard drive out of my ps2 
So I just pulled this out of my PS2. And third party network adapter that allows the use of a SATA hard drives. So I have a solid, a one terabyte SSHD drive in there right now. Cost me like, I don't know, $70, something like that. And the way I connect that to my PC is with an eSATA station. If you look back on the screen, these are this is what an eSATA station is. It's just a way to really convert hard drives to to USB or eSATA or USB 3. I have a really cheap one, so it doesn't have the best transfer rate, but it works. So I'm just putting my hard drive in that right now. So my computer has just recognized that. Um, and let's go to WinHip. So you're gonna want to launch WinHip and make sure to run it as administrator. I'll show you what happens if you don't. So select drive. If I click that, it just says there are no PS2 formatted drives on your system. All right. Just simply right click it, run it as administrator. And look at that. Fine. Um, so I'm going to go here. This is my PlayStation 2 drive right now. Um, initially, you won't have this, especially if you're setting us right away. You're not going to have all of these games on here. So you're going to want to go to this and you'll get this warning message that says the selected hard drive does not have a valid PS2 master boot record. So we'll click format drive down at the bottom. And this is really important. You want to make sure that uh, that it's 48 bit is selected. Uh, you definitely don't want 28. 28, uh, for some reason, it isn't registered by uh, the OPL manager. So yeah, you want to make sure it's on 48 and then just click OK. I'm not going to do that because I already this is a completely different drive. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go back to my other drive, and uh, you can see all my games that I've already added, uh, and I'll show you the formats that are accepted. So, right now I just uh, these are backups of games I already own, but you can see that it accepts this MDS file, which is kind of like a header for um, this other format. I can show you right here this MDF, so MDS is like the header for that, so it recognizes that and then it reads from this MDF file, um, or it can just straight up accept ISOs. Um, it looks like it can also accept bin files, or, or is this a Q? Oh, this is a Q file, so it also accepts Q files, um, which, is, which is really nice. It's got a, a really wide compatibility range. I'm not going to add those games. Instead, you know, I'll go back here, go, and right, I have, I had quarantine, in the disk drive right now. I actually have this game and I just popped it in my disk drive and then if you go down here and click uh, CD DVD drive D which is you know my drive and, and probably a different different drive for you uh, it shows the size of the disk and then you just modify the name right here so you just change the name to whatever you want it like I've changed it to dot hack uh, backslash backslash quarantine part four so I, I would do that uh, I would like to note that these options right here uh, don't show up in OPL, like this disable DVD 9. So you just want to be aware of these options because if at, for some reason that a game doesn't work, you'll probably have to refer to these and modify them here. Uh, OPL does have some other options that, that would help for compatibility, but not specifically these ones. Uh, I'm going to click cancel, but you can just click OK and it'll start ripping the disk. It takes around 12 minutes. It really depends uh, on how fast your your disk drive is. Mine isn't all that fast, so it takes roughly 12 minutes for each game. After you've done that, you make sure uh, sometimes for some reason uh, the disk drive, like I've had it where it got switched to 28 bits. Uh, for, I don't know why, but uh, OPL, like I said before, won't recognize that. So you want to make sure that 48 bit is checked just in case. Um, but just you can just go to scan and repair uh, PS2 drive and then uh, select the one that you want, of course. This doesn't take too long. Of course, I have a really big drive. If you've got a smaller drive, it's not going to take you very long. I'm not going to go through the whole process of doing this just because to save time. But right, so I would just click if there are any fragmentations, which there aren't really, I would click repair. And then I click save, but I'm just going to cancel it right now because I don't need to do that. All right, so we're going to exit out of um, WinHip, and I'm going to open 
um, OPL manager and I'm going to run this as administer also. Uh, that's the only way that it can recognize this drive. So I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, for the first time, you know, for first recognizing your drive. Uh, and I'm going to delete the cache. You don't need to do that. I'm just showing you what it would look like. Um, okay, so I'm going to go mode up here, which is in uh, settings and mode. Then I'm going to click local PS2 hard disk drive. I'm going to click save. And it says no local game cache found. And then, so you're going to get the list for it. It's just, and these are the hard drives that it found. The one that I'm looking at right now is uh, hard disk drive three. And there it is. It, it loaded all of my games and got the list. Okay, so these are the games that I don't have artwork for yet. These are the games that I do. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go up here to bat batch actions and download art. Um, I could do these, but I'm not going to do those ones. Instead, I'm just going to make sure that one's checked and uh, have all these checked. So we'll start that. And you can see it's just downloading all this information for me really quickly. And that's done. And now you can see if I come back in here, look at that. Everything is perfectly downloaded and in there. Um, the only downside to this is that it doesn't save directly to your hard disk drive, unfortunately. So it just makes a folder and uh, puts all of those artwork and CD images and whatever inside there. Uh, so we can go ahead and close OPL Manager now. Um, sometimes it will ask you to update if you haven't have the latest version. Uh, I'm right now I'm in version one or point one eight, which is the latest version. So I'm gonna close that. Uh, this is where it puts all of that artwork. It's just inside this art folder here. So I'm going to take that art folder and put it in my flash drive. I think this is it. Yeah. So this is kind of this is a theme that I had installed, but you guys don't need that. So let's go into artwork. Actually, I can just merge the folder. So I'll just copy this folder and then paste it over here. We'll place the files in the destination. And now we've got a lot more artwork. So I'm going to take out my USB drive and go back over to my PS2. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to launch U, U launch Elf by just pressing X on it. you can kind of see that it says file browser at the top so i'm just going to click circle and then go down to uh, mass which is the usb storage device that i just put in my, to my ps2 uh, so then i'm going to go in this folder right here and i'm going to press x to mark the art folder and i'm going to press r1 and i'm going to click copy so i just copied it i'm going to go back out and then I'm going to go into um, my hard disk drive. Oh, wait, sorry. I haven't put my hard disk drive back in yet. I forgot about that part. That's okay. Okay, so it's not going to want to load my hard drive because for some reason it works at the start. So I'm just going to uh, power off my PS2 and then reboot it. Okay. So we're going to go back to the ulaunch elf file, go back into the file browser, and uh, go to this hard drive. And you'll see this is loading HD modules. That means it's installed correctly. I'm going to back out of there for one second. I'm going to go down to the mass storage device that I was just on. And I'm going to copy that file again. So that was in here. Select that, copy it. Go back, back in the hard drive, go into OPL, plus OPL, but, right, so I'm just going to overwrite that file with the new art file. Okay, so after that's done, all of your artwork should show up. So we're just going to go back into the MSC folder and go back to the PS2 browser. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you really quick how I got um, OPL daily build to just show up on this menu. Just because it's it's pretty simple, but I don't I didn't really find a lot of easy guides for it. So we just want to go to this free McBoot configurator down at the bottom. Press X. Uh, then go down to this configure OS DSYS options. And uh, go right or so you go down one option, then you go right or left to select these. And uh, pick one that's open or whatever slot you wanted it, and then press X on it. And you can name it here. Of course, I'm not going to change the name because it's already set. So I'm just going to press OK. And then you can change the path uh, where it's located at. So it's on my, my memory card or my uh, flash drive. So I just go down there. Oops. Let me go in here. And then I select the ELF file. So now that's going to show up right on the main menu. Makes it really easy to... Um, to boot to that. Uh, you, want, you want to make sure that you go down to save CNF to memory card zero right here. You want to make sure you do that otherwise your, your options aren't going to get saved. Um, so I'm going to press X there and you'll see at the top it says saved uh, to free big boot uh, configuration file or whatever. So I exit that. Uh, now I'm just going to go and boot the OPL daily build. And you can see that the artwork and the CD show up perfectly. Look at that. Um, there are other options in here, but uh, just to get it to show your hard disk, I guess I can show you how to do that. Um, you're going to want to go over to settings. And then down here, you want to say um, HDD device start mode auto. And uh, just the default menu is HDD games. So it'll boot right to that option for you and then you can see all the games in here um, I will show you the other uh, menu options that I was talking about if you go to a game let's just say this one and you go to configure uh, well I mean you can these are the modes the other modes I was talking about that aren't in that program that you can kind of uh, help with compatibility uh, but you can see there isn't a dis an option to disable DVD 9 um, you can also go to configure GSM. This is how you modify the resolution, the base resolution for the game. Um, so I'll just do uh, 1080i right now. And uh, save, just I'm going to save the settings. And then I'm going to run the game. So you can see it switched to 1080i from my computer. Which is, that was a widescreen image, that was kind of nice too. Um, let's see, load, right, so I'm playing dot hack from my hard disk drive, or to see See if there are any load times. So, I believe that was quite a bit faster than it would normally would be. And the games look really good in uh, 1080i. So I would definitely say this is the best way to play them. Plus, you don't get a lot of um, or any kind of texture issues that you see. Uh, on a PSX2, like a lot of the time, there are texture issues. Even if you, if you, especially if you have it at really high resolutions above standard, uh, and there are other gr graphic problems, uh, which this doesn't seem to have as many of. Uh, and I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show. Um, thank you for watching. I don't do many of these, but uh, I thought this one might help some people because the other ones had some programs that. You didn't, there's some steps that really didn't need to be taken, but see ya.